Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Ghost Layers Report. Me as always Ryan, here in Tokyo, Japan. Now right now, I'm in uh, Takada no Baba, there in the more central area of Tokyo, here at a um, popular public meeting spot, as you can see, right there behind me. There's a local university nearby, so lots of young people here. Um, nice public area to kind of make a few uh, special comments on a few things. Now, I've heard a lot of people say face-to-face -face discussions, various forums, even on YouTube a bit, and um, on Facebook, lots of different places, that people are wondering why you don't see Japanese people out in the street rioting and going nuts in the anti-nuclear struggle here in Japan. Now, first of all, any type of uh, rioting in the street is very, very, very detrimental to society. You simply don't want that. Yeah, people are really angry. And there's lots of rage and discontent and civil unrest here in Japan over the um, nuclear issue. But to suggest that rioting in the streets and violence is going to truly work in the current situation is frankly in my mind a really bad, bad idea. Now for those of you who haven't been to a lot of these um, anti-nuclear protests, it can be easy to uh, misunderstand what you see through videos and pictures and written reports about what's actually happened there because of course it's difficult to feel the air so to speak unless you're actually there and that's not your fault at all okay now what I can tell you is actually that these protests are quite tense all right it's not a light atmosphere at all and there's an unspoken game for lack of a better word that goes on between the protesters and the Tokyo Metro Police Department every time they have a protest. Now these protests are consistent and are on a regular basis but in my experience every time it's a, it's a game, it's a very tense game and a very serious game and one that not is not taken lightly at all there, all right? Um, have you seen in past videos I've done, I've shown you that on a routine basis, when you're trying to get access to the, to the area where they're protesting, it's a cat and mouse game with the police sometimes to get proper access. You gotta bob and weave, you gotta look around, you gotta keep aware. You gotta see where the organizers are looking to help people get access. Sometime I've had to sneak through and get past the police when uh, the police are overwhelmed or dealing with something else at a second, sometimes a split second. I can slip through and make my way up to the area. I've done videos where they've totally blocked off area, denied access. Trust me, all that's happening. And as time has went along, the police restrict things more and more and more to a situation in which they basically force the demonstrators and activists and protesters onto the sidewalk. Now that's not only not safe, but builds more tension. 
is these people who are coming out are very serious about this. It's a very emotional thing for them. And they're trying their best to be civil. They're giving democracy its best shot. And when the police create that type of extra tension and creating a potentially unsafe environment, especially when larger crowds start showing up and latest tactics by the police to bring out heavy, heavy barricades. It's quite shocking to see some of these heavy barricades that they now employ to keep people off the street. For a larger crowd, that's going to be dangerous and unsafe. And I don't know if the police are aware of that. As a side effect of that, it can reduce numbers. Now, reduce numbers at, a, at the demonstration did not mean the movement is getting smaller. People can lose confidence in showing up to these things, do they? It's overcrowded. They can't get proper access. Continuing to frustrate people. And they'll stay home. And that reduces numbers. It makes it look like the movement's losing steam. The media can report on that. The government can use that for political leverage, you know, brokering deals in the parliament, and how serious they can take people. So it's really tense situation. So you really, at this point, you cannot suggest going mad in the street. Violence would be exactly what the capitalist class, those in power here, those who control the means of production, those who have control over the society, want. And of course that would make the Metro Police's job very easy. It would fully justify any type of action they take against protesters if they have one spark of violence, one incident of rioting. We have be careful. So yeah, you know, a lot of you guys say people should be out in the street mad as hell, rioting, getting violent, go up against the police, refusing to end protests until they get direct action that day. That's to suggest revolution. And at this point, it's not reaching revolution levels because the democratic process is still happening at this point. And we're seeing small moves here and there. At the point in which the democratic process completely breaks down and we've had a failure at diplomacy and to negotiate and get what the people of Japan want, then, and only then, when we're 100% sure the democratic process has collapsed and failed, alternative options could be legitimately discussed. But for now, please refrain from suggesting any rioting, or violence, or total absolute resistance. That's in a revolution situation and we're not to that. We have to go through a process, you see, a scientific, logical process for these type of things, okay? So I thought this video was worth making and these points were worth bringing up. As always, I thank you very much for watching this video and all the past videos I've made. Please check out a lot of my past videos. I'm sure you'll find them interesting. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do that. You'll get a lot of interesting vids on this issue and many others related to Japan. So next time, this is me, Ryan, here in Tokyo, Japan. Checking out.